When I was a teenager, I had a band. We'd play a variety of venues around Dublin City, some big, some small. Mostly small. We'd do our 40 minutes and afterwards another band would get up and do theirs. And you could almost guarantee one of these bands would play Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. I used to love this song, but I can't even listen to it anymore because I heard it so many times during this period of my life. And the reason I bring this up is because it draws an interesting parallel with how YouTube ads operate. You'll see the same ad again. I'm going to give you my number one tip to get over a breakup. And again. Anyone can be Santa. And again. Mm. Oh. <gasps> and again. This one in particular, that music just... It's like it steals a part of my soul every time I hear it. Carrie Pamu Pamu, the artist responsible for this? She is now my mortal enemy. When I'm in work, I use YouTube like radio, listening mostly to long-form content, and I can easily have any one of these ads show up a dozen times in a single day. Most of them are quick, still annoying, but like 15 seconds max, in and out, whatever. But the ones that really get under my skin? Long ads. Your body wash is But I like it. 1 minute 34. 1 minute 50. If you have an hour this week, you can learn a hundred songs on the piano. 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Yes, you can skip them, but like I said, I have YouTube on as background. And when it's the tenth time I have to walk over to the other side of the shop just to skip an ad, and it's not even midday, oh, that just grinds on me. So I've got two questions. One. Why do I see the same ads over and over again? You think with over 300 million English-speaking users, there'd be plenty enough people to share the pain. Two, even if YouTube allows it, why do advertisers pay for ads longer than 15 seconds? Because in repeated viewings, all it's going to do is annoy us. Case in point, HelloFresh. This is a company I'd heard about a few years ago. They send you all the ingredients you need for a specific recipe. A bunch of different podcasters I used to listen to had them as their sponsor, and it sounded like a really neat idea, something that I put in the back of my mind for a time when I might be able to afford such a service. These days, I feel quite differently. I will never use their service, even if their tasty and efficient meals happen to unlock the cure for cancer, because over the last three months, I've had to listen to this HelloFresh is the easy way to cook delicious meals at home over a hundred times. Now, there is a school of thought that says an ad succeeds in its job if you remember it. I mean, I'm even talking about it right now. But I can't help but feel that something's gone wrong when a company that I liked made me hate them through their advertising campaigns alone. I asked a regular who comes into my store about this. As someone who works in advertising, he told me that HelloFresh can actually make more money from selling data of user engagement than from the product itself. People clicking skip on an ad they've already seen a dozen times in order to get away from it is not engagement. It is an attempt to escape mental anguish akin to water torture, the kind that can only be achieved through the repetitive assault of one's psyche until we are left with nothing but a broken shell, once resembling a human being. Okay, okay, that was low, I admit it. But now you know how I feel every time I hear that HelloFresh ad. Actually, no, this one's still worse. A few years back with the rise of social media, targeted ads became a subject of much debate, Many people felt uncomfortable with the idea of their online habits being commodified, shared by companies so they could advertise products to us more effectively. And you know, I think I'm one of the few people that was not only okay with this, but actually encouraged it. Considering that ads are a necessary evil of the modern age and a way to keep the majority of our lovely internet free, I'd prefer to see ads for products that I might actually want. Unfortunately, all those companies, with their money and research and clever people, absolutely suck at their job. In January of 2019, I bought the Resident Evil 2 remake digitally for my Xbox One, a game that I had been very much looking forward to. And the day after buying it, I see an ad for Resident Evil 2 on Facebook. Now, according to the Googly, Microsoft and Facebook have some sort of deal involving advertising, which would lead me to believe that in user data terms, whatever Microsoft knows, Facebook knows, and vice versa. With this in mind, why the f*** did I get an ad on Facebook for a product I already owned? They know I bought it. There is a record on my Microsoft account that I bought it, yet they felt it necessary to advertise it to me. And not just once, either. And every time I'd see the ad pop up on my feed, I'd ask myself, why? Why are they wasting their money and my time and not showing me an ad for something that I don't own and might actually be interested in? Now look, I know YouTube works a bit different because anyone with 50 bucks and an imagination can do whatever they want. <laughs> I mean, 
what is this? What's being advertised here? Actually, there is one ad that came up which was so surreal that it was... It's just... Well, watch. I still have no idea what the f*** this is for. But overly artistic ads aside, for the most part, there seems to be no rhyme nor reason to what YouTube ads are aimed at me. I went to rewatch one particular video. Tasty intense, sweet gingerbread man. Don't judge me. And the ad that came up before it was for a Christian preacher. You know, I've been through quite a few battles since I've been here last. And people sometimes say, well, Pastor John, you're very brave. No, I just don't want to go to hell. Maybe they felt those of us who watched these type of videos were the ones that really needed Jesus. Touché. But I think that's giving YouTube way too much credit. I watch a lot of video essays. One of my favorite content creators is this dude called Turkey Tom, and in the middle of watching a video on his second channel, an ad popped up that was an entire other video essay, 46 minutes long. Like, do they think I'm going to stop what I'm currently doing and spend three quarters of an hour watching an ad? This is something that used to happen a lot more in years past. Full 40 minute long podcasts would be inserted as ads, and it really irks me that YouTube even allows this. It's just weird. Many times I've been in the middle of a heavy metal playlist and some new age band will come up as an ad in the middle of it. Actually, that's one thing I've never been able to get my head around. Artists putting full songs as ads on YouTube, and it's even more confusing to me when professional bands do it. Whatever algorithm that YouTube uses to target commercial content towards people just seems really poorly optimized. At least half the ads I get feel like random bullshit. Look, it's not difficult. Here's what I like. Pizza, soft drinks, books, Japanese shit, that thing I don't talk about, video games, movies where things explode. More of that, please, YouTube. One thing I've noticed our beloved video streaming platform seems to love advertising. Gambling. I don't like gambling. I think it destroys people in a way that alcohol or tobacco can only dream of. And these motherfuckers actually have the gall to be like, Hey buddy, we're on your side. We want you to gamble in a safe and responsible manner. I really wish some company would just come out with an honest ad. Here at More Bets, we only make money when you lose. We know you're addicted, and we love to prey on that weakness. Having problems at home? Come place a bet with us. We'll even make you feel good about feeding your crippling addiction. We know just the right amount of push and pull to keep you hooked for life. But even if we do ruin you financially, there's a hundred more desperate souls just like you, waiting to piss away their lives. More bets. You're basically cattle to us. I do think with YouTube's family-friendly, squeaky-clean images it's been pushing for the last several years that it's more than a little hypocritical to be promoting gambling with such gusto. But if you're targeting consenting adults, then I guess I should get off my high horse and let grown-ass men and women make their own decisions. And that brings us to our final topic. Scams. The amount of scam ads on YouTube is extremely disturbing, and it is absolutely inexcusable that they're profiting from them. How about we start 2024 by building a $373 a day business together, live, in the space of a week. We've stumbled across a way to earn reliable paychecks week after week. Paychecks like 12, 14, and $22,000 consistently like clockwork. In less than 24 hours, you will have 1,000 pounds in your account and then 1,000 pounds a day for life in just five minutes. Anything that says you will earn hundreds or thousands of euro in a day is a scam because it's just not possible to guarantee that kind of return on anything. Okay, let's check this company, Cryptico. By the way, a very legitimate looking organization. I was kind of curious to see where the link on the ad would bring me. Right, I'm liking this super confidence box checked here in the corner. And if we click again, Tesla? So let's just pretend for a second they weren't making this ridiculous claim. The link brought me somewhere different than what was originally discussed. The robot gentleman in the ad I watched talked about making his wealth using a platform called Chain Reaction. This is not Chain Reaction's website. This is. But what's funny about this website is it also looks like a scam. Out of curiosity, I had a quick Google to see if there was any legitimacy to this very sketchy looking company. I found this article on CoinJournal titled, Chain Reaction Review 2024. Honest Review by Trader. 
friends call me Honest Tom. Having undertaken extensive research and investigations, we can assume that the chain reaction trading platform may well be a legitimate crypto trading platform. All claims made by the trading bot platform appear to be accurate. As vague as that statement is, the person who claimed to investigate this company is also promoting it. Not a great sign. Also, and this is the cherry on top, CoinJournal.net is not a trustworthy website. So we've got a scam YouTube ad promoting a scam trading platform that brings us to a different scam website and the original trading platform is being pushed as legitimate by a website that knowingly promotes scams. And God bless us, everyone. The most bizarre scam ads I've come across are deep fakes of Elon Musk. This is your lucky day. Your life is going to change now. I don't know how you ended up on this page, but you won't regret it. And there's f***ing loads of these. You need to go to our website. Your life is going to change now. This is your lucky day. I don't know how you ended up on this page. Yes. I will speak in plain and simple language. Or money can increase successfully and effectively by investing. Greetings all. I am Elon Musk. Elon Musk has become this example in people's minds as some sort of business genius. And look, I'm not an Elon hater. He seems like a nice dude and super chill, but the man bought Twitter for $44 billion, a website that, let's be honest, isn't worth more than 100 bucks in a six-pack. And some of these scam Elon Musk ads aren't even deepfakes, they're just really shitty overdubs. That's what you were looking for. Now you can earn 1,000 euros a day on investments. Yes, we have developed a unique artificial intelligence that conducts automatic operations on the currency exchange. There's one scam ad that I actually almost fell for. It doesn't appear before a video, it appears on your YouTube feed. It looks like it's something to do with Mr. Beast offering you $1,000. When I realized it had nothing to do with him, I reported the ad. Then I saw it again and reported it again. And again. And again. Between March 31st and April 22nd, 2023, I reported this ad a total of nine times. The channel name changes, the wording is sometimes different, but they always use the Mr. Beast logo on this avatar. I still see this ad pop up all the time, as recently as last month, in fact. And this, this is the one that shows us that if YouTube doesn't care enough to protect the reputation of their biggest content creator, then they really just don't give a sh**. I know it's not a great idea to criticize the platform you post on, especially with a company which is way too quick with their ban hammer towards content which they find disagreeable. And I mean, yeah, a channel as tiny as mine would be washed away without notice. And be that as it may, I have come to the point where the rampant amount of scams on the site, which YouTube happily accepts ad money for, is simply unacceptable. And I wouldn't mind nearly as much if this was the utopia of free expression that YouTube was back in the 2000s, but it's not. Since YouTube bowed to the pressure of its advertisers several years ago, content creators, for fear of being demonetized, have had to censor normal words. It doesn't matter about the context because most of YouTube's moderation is now done by bots. People get graped. Others unalive themselves. We have PDF files and child gooners. We can't even talk about those naughty Germans that were all the rage from 1933 to 1945. So YouTube holds its content creators to a strict standard but lets its advertisers do whatever they want. And I mean, why not? It's YouTube's house and thus YouTube makes the rules. We just live in it. I mean, metaphorically speaking, I don't even currently live in the house. I'm camping at the edge of their lawn. Well, you know what, YouTube? I think you're long overdue to clean up your house. It's starting to stink of shit, and I can smell it all the way over here.